Hey, guess what, pal? What? What do we got? We're professional now. Are we ready to do this? I am so ready to do this. versus Mark Yodi Riley. Here is the final question in the Ultimate Showdown. What famous brother-sister duo appear in the cast of 16 Candles? John and Joan Cusack. That's correct. Mark Riley has won the Ultimate Superman Showdown. is flying in. Six, John and Joan Cusack. Oh. Hey! Wow. And the winner! Hell dangerous! Yeah. Joined now by the Schmodown champion, Mark Riley. Where do you see Dan Merle's future going in this show? Oh, he's going to go very, very far. You can see that he's prepped, that he's done this before. The lights do not get to him. I can see uh, Merle actually going to the finals, maybe taking me on. And your winner is the new
been dishonest. As of today, the Knights of Ken have begun. Okay. JT, maybe we'll look down the line, but right now, I gotta go. If those two guys are gonna walk away, well then they're losers too. I'm with you, buddy. If I've done everything I wanted to do in the Schmodown, there's only one logical step left, and that is to walk away. In the team tournament, the theme is anarchy. We're gonna take competitors' names from a hat and pair them up. something or other, that, uh, regardless of him. Uh, there's a, it's a lot of fun, it's gonna be a great evening. Also, we have the Inner Geekdom title match. Which I'm really looking forward to. The Inner Geekdom tournament, also something that I really came up with all by myself. And I think that the Inner Geekdom tournament really shaped up to be a wonderful event with Jason Inman defending his title against Mark Kanopic. Rising star and the, the breakout star from that tournament. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the two people that just show up when I tell them to, ladies and gentlemen, Christian Harloff and Mark Allen! Yeah. Uh, no, that's not why we're here tonight. 
here to talk about First Man. Oh, okay. First Man. Okay. Okay. First Man, I'm happy to report to the crowd. There's been a lot of controversy. Neil Armstrong does plant a flag on the moon, and okay. that flag says Nike. It's a really good <laughs> Halloween. How was Halloween? Oh, Halloween. Yeah, how was Halloween? Funny story about Halloween is that uh, Halloween is only playing at the Toronto International Film Festival tonight. <laughs> and I looked at the schedule and I said September 8th. That sounds like something I already have, something on the docket for that. So I looked at Halloween and I went up to Danny McBride and I said, Danny, I wish you the best of luck with your little flick you got there. But there is literally no movie and no force on this earth that is going to keep Mark Gellis from coming to the live movie <laughs> show. That's it. That's it. Two score. Two score. Look, I'm glad you're here because the one event, which is our third one that we've done this year, and we are going to really cap it off because, like Thad said, he came up with a really great idea. Uh, but what I will say is that anarchy begins tonight. We're going to have the team of Stacy Howard and Winston Marshall going up against two legends of the game, Mr. John Roker. And he's back. He is back and he is here tonight. Dan Merle is here. That's right. We love him. But I'll tell you what, I was outside and I was asking people who you think is going to win, who you think is going to win, and I'm talking about the Inner Geekdom Championship. And man, is it split. It's split down the middle. Let me ask you. I'll ask you, give you a chance right now that I'm gonna hit that desk and get this thing started. Round of applause. Does Jason Inman win, keep the championship tonight? All right, it's not a great round. All right. How about the new rookie sensation, Mark Hanapa? Wow, I don't know, I don't know. All right, well, let's see. I love talking to you, but I want to play some Schmodown. Let's get it done. Christian, you know, it's not going to be wow. scored as a knockout, but Dan no. Merle, start to finish, really proved his worth. Oh, oh there he is. Look at the outlaw. Look at the gloves. Oh. Milk it and Nilio taking a side. Oh, look at the X action. Unbelievable. And your winner. So I've come for you, man, oh, and yeah? I've worked my whole year to have my shot at the title. You realize the take way this, this works around here is that somebody beats you and then I beat them. Oh. That's how this works around here. Two, one. Barry Levins. And your winner, and the new champion! Are you ready? Yes, sir. John Roca, are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. The champion, Mark Riley, are you ready? Ready. And your winner, Dangerous Dan Murrow! Look at Roca. Uh, Christian was very clear about the fact that this was a retirement match for him. Uh, what nobody knew except for me was that this was a double retirement match because Whoa. I made up my mind a long time ago that uh, the next time I lost this belt, it'd be time to step away from the game. The commission doesn't know about this. Nobody knows about that this. Sucks. Christian, Christian, oh, one more thing. Sorry, Christian Mark. Else, no. Hi, guys. Uh, the theme is anarchy. 
The theme is anarchy. This is not your father's tournament. We're going to take competitors' names from a hat, draw them at random, and pair them up. No teams in their current state will be paired up. This is completely random. I have no more comments on this. That's what's happening. Oh, oh shit. Oh, oh, all right. Wait a second. Oh, Winston Marshall from the world's finest. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Uh, with, ooh, with sa sta sassy Stacy Howard. Uh, a very underrated competitor. Very underrated. I, I sleep on her. She's she's strong. That's going to be a good match. She's very strong. That's she beat Mark Ellis. Ooh. Hmm. Dan Merle. That's he's it. doing it. That is an He's back. That is he's doing the tournament. Ooh. John Roca. Roca and Merle. They're back. September the 8th, live. How do you feel about this live match you got coming up? You're teaming with your guy, Roca. Uh, yeah. It's got an interesting matchup. Uh, former enemies make the best friends. And uh, that's why I was so excited when I found out that uh, I was getting teamed up with Roca. I feel like he and I are very good. We were great rivals, and I think we're going to be better teammates. And part of it is that we complement each other very well. I think we both fill in some weaknesses that the other one has uh so if we're lucky enough to get past our first match and move on uh, i think we're gonna make a, a really good combination and i'm super excited to start it, it feels like i'm finally able to really prove myself as a singles competitor and pull my weight i feel like now i'm like a real member of the team you know i've really proven myself other people have beaten huge competitors in the Schmodown, have great entrances, and have really pulled out all the stops, and now I feel like I'm one of them, like I belong. You're gonna be the champ. You ever used to watch WWE? Like, look, the Hardy Brothers took it to everybody. We're the Hardy Brothers right now, right? I'm not saying they don't scare me, but I'm going after them because they scare me. Look, I've retired that Batman voice, but Batman has no fear. Black man has no fear, right? I inspire fear. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the movie Trivia Schmodown. I'm Christian Harloff. I am Mark Ellis, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the very beginning of anarchy, Christian. I'm sure everybody in the crowd, everybody watching at home, was so surprised when they found out who the teams were going to be, as shocked as you are to be drinking water that is not fizzy. <laughs> what? Uh, anyway, Anarchy begins tonight, and we have a great start to the tournament, and I think because the matchups that were paired up and what happened when you saw Kalinowski and Thad going through it, we were really welcome to some great teams, um, but some great matchups. How is a lot of these things going to work? There's so many teams put together, like, I don't know if they're going to survive. That's a combination I could never believe. But when you see Dan Merle and John Roca together, and you know their history, you wonder if they can get along, but they have been vibing together very well. Uh, I don't know how they're going to work as a team, though. Yeah, the team chemistry, it's one thing to get together behind the scenes backstage and have a couple laughs and say, hey, let's let bygones be gut. It's another thing entirely to be up on this stage right and to be able to go back and forth and answer questions. We've seen a lot of great individual competitors join as teams, and the chemistry isn't quite there. Are they going to be able to put all the 138 combined years of their life experience together for a win here tonight? Well, and they also, the thing is, too, someone I know you have some experience with, I hate to bring this up, Stacey Howard is known to upset people in the first round. She did it last year against you. She took you out it's and... All because I did not yet watch Big Trouble in Little China. Sorry. Yeah, well, I will say, I think Stacey Howard is one of the most underrated competitors that we have in this league. And she is now matched up with Winston Marshall, who I also think is underrated. You look at what the World's Finest did. They, were, they just lost out to the Shire Wolves. This is a team that should not be ignored. We sh and and you also, you've seen what's happened before. That person's definitely going to win. That's definitely going to win. This is going to be a blowout. And that doesn't always happen, does it? Yeah, I mean, the energy and charisma that they bring to the table, I'm excited to see their intro more so than I would be Roca and Merle, because we've seen Roca and Merle so many times. They come down, they try to intimidate their opponent. What are Winston 
Jason and Stacy going to bring to this table? I can say from experience, as you pointed out, she eats carrots like Peter Rabbit. Well, and they're also accompanied by Crazy Coy's Andrew, who is now their manager. Yeah. And I'm excited to see what he's going to bring to the table. And I'm excited to hear from our competitors. And we're going to hear from them right now. God creates dinosaurs. God destroys dinosaurs. Man creates dinosaurs. Man creates schmodam. Dinosaurs eat man. Schmoes inherit the earth. Now my people, underdogs are the true fighters. You've got Different teams competing, but everyone is counting my team out. And I'm saying, who do you root for? Rocky or Apollo? Rocky. Karate Kid or Cobra Kai? Cobra In the <laughs> 80s, the original, when it counted. <laughs> who do you root for? The hockey team in Miracle or Communism? <laughs> Babe or the Bacon Factory? It's the underdog all day. So what I need from you is to let my team know you're pulling for them. So I need the left side to chant, wait, and the right side to chant, I know this. Because no one knows their name, but they will after tonight. So I need a wait. I know this. Wait. I know this. So I am very proud to announce that my team has spared no expense. And I'd like you all to hold on to your butts. Well, 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 another live event for the outlaw. You know, I've been here before. I climbed the mountaintop. I whooped that JTE butt real good, didn't I? They said, Roka, you got to be in a tag team match. You got to do something Kalinowski came up with in his dreams. Anarchy. I said, really, who am I taking on? They said, Stacy and Winston. I said, I need backup. I need the best backup there is. Turn your damn phone off. I need the best backup there is. So I brought the greatest of all time out of retirement. <laughs> dangerous, Dan Merle. They don't call him dangerous because he doesn't mess stuff up. They call him dangerous because he's a two-time, two-time, two-time champion. <laughs> and it's my honor to ride alongside the greatest. You know, John Roca and I decided to call ourselves the Founding Fathers because we helped build the legacy of this game. But the thing that we have to remember, and you have to remember, is that the only thing that counts right here is tonight. It doesn't matter what we did last week. It doesn't matter what we did last year. It doesn't matter what we did three years ago. All that matters is that we come out here tonight and win. And that's what we're going to do. And there's only one crowd that will ever be here to see that match, and that's you. You are the third player. I want you to clap. I want you to cheer. And I want you to enjoy the hell out of this game. Horseman! Let's mount up. It's time to ride. So you have they, the two, the, those teams, again, you, I like what Coy did there, hyping up the team. And you can see Dan and John, they're ready to get going. And the tail of the tape, Mark, pretty simple. You got Stacey Howard and Winston Marshall, comic book movies, 80s movies, action movies, and scaring everyone with Coy's open shirt. I will tell you this, if you guys enjoyed Coy's opening, you can catch him in Las Vegas with Thunder Down Under. Yeah. And then you got the Founding Fathers. You've got... 
biopics, Spielberg movies, anything else that's going to intimidate you, they know it. They know it. They know how to start America, and damn it, they know how to start a schmodown. Are you ready to start this schmodown? Oh, yeah. I'm high on donuts. Well, let's see if they can start it with me. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown! <laughs> Introducing first! Led to the ring by their manager, Crazy Boy Jandrew, making their Schmodown team debut, Blackman Winston Marshall and Sassy Stacy Howard. Wait, I know this. Oh, there's dinosaurs, Mark, and Koi. There's a Koi with a dinosaur. Oh, Christian, you, you just gotta fall. hope that, that dinosaur's dinosaur gonna fall right down, down the stairs over there. That's an impressive dinosaur. It's like when he jumped up the kitchen, now he's gonna play Look at that dinosaur. There's some pants on that dinosaur. There's Stacy and Winston. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a scenario right there. That Life a found a way. Yeah. Life found a way. Yeah, look at that. Do we know who's in the dinosaur costumes? Ooh. If I was the guest, I would say it was JT and Snyder. That dinosaur is going to pass out. The commitment to character. Oh, that dinosaur incredible. almost ate shit, Mark. The dinosaur almost ate it. They're going to be extinct. We have evolved. It's, it's all over. It's a pure circus. Competitors are hitting the stage now. They have made it, and the dinosaurs made their move. That is a violent dinosaur. That is a violent dinosaur. That is a... That is one angry looking dinosaur right there. Dinosaur just had an aneurysm. Wow, that is uh, look out below. Thing. Whoa, oh, hey, easy, easy nice boy, nice easy thing. boy. All right, now I'm gonna ask the dinosaur to get lost. Wow, look at that. All right, oh. Okay, oh, he's, he's gonna, got him. I see it. Oh, there, there it, okay. Oh, he made it. There they go. Oh, easy. Don't trip over the wheel. Wow, that is something. Wow. Impressive. All right, so there's, oh, wait, boy. I know this. They, they are there. They are there. They are ready. They're setting up, and they're ready to go. That was a good entrance, Mark. Uh, Christian, do you know what species of dinosaur that was? That Boy, was a Triceratoratops. Oh, I like what you did there. I like what you did. All right. And their opponents. Representing the five horsemen. Making their Schmodown team debut. He is the former team champion, former singles champion, the outlaw, John Roca. His partner, the former two-time champion, Dangerous Dan Merle, the founding Fathers! Christian, it's more than just them two walking out. It appears yep. we have some horsemen. Yep. And his music was made by Vince Cox. Also made the music for Vince, for Mark Riley. Made it for the horsemen. They're the horsemen together. Coming out to champion justice. Jason Inman, who will be defending a little later. Two-time champion Mark Yodi Riley. Matt Nost, the former team champion. And there they are. And they are trailed by John Roca with his customary mask and you have Dan Merle, the customary sunglasses. They Dan's look there. focused. They're ready. You've got, look, he's taking pictures, selfies, and there's Dan Merle and Rogan. Look, who would have ever thought that we would have seen these two together? Unbelievable. They seem to be playing very nice, and maybe that's the influence of the team sport. There's the horse with five horsemen. Look at the horsemen all ring. together. They, they formed at the last live event, and here they are now. and Merle playing with the crowd. And, and oh, they're come, going back up into the back, crowd, Christian. Back to the stage. Here comes John. They're saying hi to everybody. All right, let's go. Dan Merle's going into the balcony, I believe. Venturing it, really deep. Here comes Here they come. Back. And there is Roca and Merle hitting the stage. The two legends hitting the stage here. And there they are, John Roca and Dan Merle. All five of them. Look at this crew. All together. And 
that's got to be a little intimidating for, for we. And right Winston and Stacy just resigned to watch all this madness happen. So many combined victories of the yeah. five gentlemen in front of them on stage. Can Winston and Stacy overcome that intimidation factor? And I like how Jason Nimmin looks like, uh, what's it from Breaking Bad, like when... Uh, you think he looks like a meth head? No, uh, no. I don't know. He just looks like he's in Breaking Bad. That's My what I read in there. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. And Mark, why don't you give the breakdown to rules to our competitors? In round number one, eight questions are going to be asked to the field from eight different corners of the movie Trivia Schmodown. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round one. I will remind all the competitors this is the team format, so you may not rely on your teammates' knowledge in round one. It is just you writing down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard in front of you. Once we ask you by name to reveal your answer, please show the whiteboard to your camera of choice. At the same time, you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. Keep in mind, competitors, each team has three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the three rounds of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you need to buy yourself some time, use a JTE rule, and each team also has one challenge. If you're not liking the way a question was ruled, you can use a challenge, and perhaps your challenge will be upheld. All right, so with that, wait, I know this. Are you ready? Yes, sir. And the Founding Fathers, are you ready? Always. Damn right. Then let's get ready to schmodown! Here we go. Round number one, and the contest begins in the realm of comedies. <laughs> All right. Who stars alongside Bill Murray as his high school strong psych psychotherapist, Dr. Leo Marvin, in What About Bob? I saw that movie in the... Uh in the movie theater. Is that true? It's the first Bill Murray movie I saw on the big screen. And I was like, one day, I'm gonna watch more movies from that guy. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Starting with Dan Merle. Richard Dreyfus. Correct. Stacy Howard. Richard Dreyfus. Yes, sir. John Rocha. Richard Dreyfus. And Winston Marshall. I like to be different. I said Dan Aykroyd. Oh, all right, so okay, they missed okay, it. The baby. Founding Fathers goes up by one point here. And our next question. All right, three of the four <laughs> smelling the correct answer. That would be Richard Dreyfus. Your next category comes from a world of directors. And your question is, who directed the 1989 iconic romantic comedy When Harry Met Sally? Do you like that picture? Uh, I do. The best scene in that movie Don't is say it. Uh, the late um, Bruno Kirby and Billy Crystal. Oh. They're power walking through Central Park. It is hilarious. Five, four, and unsettling. Three. Two, one, Stacey Howard. Is it something right, man? <laughs> Incorrect. Uh, John Roca. Rob Reiner. Correct. Winston Marshall. I had a W. John Hughes is not correct, I'm aware. Dan Merle. Rob Reiner. 4-1. Four, 4-1. One. Four, one. Founding Fathers taking a commanding lead here so far. Next question here. Category of dramas. Dramas. In Ghost, what does Sam always say to Molly instead of saying... I love you. You know what? Uh, you know what I tell Molly. I love. You when love you, that dog. I love when she licks my face. A little silly dog. So I ruined the joke. I'm sorry. Five, oh, so four, three, two, <laughs> one. Pens down, please. John Roca. Ditto. Correct. Winston. I'm having a rough start tonight. I see you uh, is not really? correct, man. It's not. Uh, it's Dan. Not right. Ditto. Correct. Stacy. Ditto. Stacey had it. 6 2. Hey, Stacey. Six, two. Next question here. Hey, thank you for carrying us right now. I you're appreciate welcome, that, girl. Welcome. Your next question um, comes from the world of animated movies, movies drawn by hand or on a computer. Your question is In Shrek, what character attempts to save Fiona from Shrek in the forest and sings an annoying song about it? It's a good movie, that Shrek. Yeah, I appreciate your pantomiming. See, why did you start with this so I don't look like a jackass? Five. This is a great question. Four, <laughs> three, two, one. Pens down. Winston. It's Robin Hood, dog. Ro correct. Yes. Robin correct. Yes. Robin Hood. Dan. Robin Hood. Dan. You can't read it, but I said donkey. I couldn't think of it. Incorrect. Right. Uh, Stacy. I also said donkey. No. And John. Sadly. I didn't know what donkey as well. Wow. So only Winston gets it. <laughs> Winston gets it. And the crowd loses it. <laughs> All right, nice. All right, Winston hits a point there. 
All right, next question. Winston, sit down before you lose a point. All right, next question is fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi. In the critically acclaimed smash, Seventh Son, <laughs> who stars as an aging spook training a young apprentice to join the battle against the evil queen of the witches, Mother Malkin. What? Boy. We just got word if, uh, if Winston yeah. gets this right, he will crowd surf. Yeah. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Dangerous Dan Merle. I should, but who cares? That's all I can think <laughs> all of. Right. <laughs> Stacy. I could think of it. Uh, Stacy. Jeff Bridges? That's correct. John yeah. Roca. John Roca. Yeah. Did you, Did have you say it? Jeff Bridges? Is that what you're Oh, uh, John had it and I Winston. I may have been thinking about the mask of Zorro. I said Anthony Did not. is not right. correct. So because of that, the yeah, Founding Fathers okay. still have a three-point lead here, and here's our next question. Our next question comes from the world of action-slash-adventure movies. And your question is, who plays the villainous mastermind, Quaylen, in the 1993 actual smash hit, Cliffhanger? I like that you said Quaylen. I said, <laughs> well, it's a, it's oh, a Q.U. Oh, it's going to kill me. Caitlin? Five. Oh, oh, uh, prov- um, Four. Repeat the question. Repeat the question. That's one. Okay. Who plays the villainous mastermind Quaylen in 1993's Cliffhanger? Five. Oh, wait. I still think I got it Four. <laughs> three. Two. One. Pens down. Stacy? Um, is this John Lithgow? Correct. <laughs> John Roca. John Roca. Hey, let me help Bibbs out. It's John Lithgow, champ. Correct. And Winston. Wrong John. Yeah. Wrong John. Didn't have no, it, all right. No. And Dan? John Lithgow. Had it. All right, so the Founding Fathers go back up four points here. Nine, five, and here is your seventh question here in the category of horror slash thriller. Who directed the 2014 mockumentary horror comedy, What We Do in the Shadows? Oh, wow, the crowd reacting strongly. What does Christian Harloff do in the shadows? I'm married with two kids, nothing. <laughs> he sits in a closet and plays video Five, games. Five, no, I fell asleep on my couch last night. Four, three, two, one, pens down. John Roca. Taika Waititi? Yes, that is correct. Winston, didn't have it. Dan. Taika Waititi. Yep, and Stacy. Stacy got it. So the Founding Fathers, 11 to 6. 11 to 6, and here is our it's final. 11 to 6. You know, the Founding Fathers, sizable five point lead. In, it's impressive to see, know this, kind of hang around. They're not going to take a lead by the end Stacey's of this, but they're a fight. hanging Stacey's tough. Winston's got to get on, and he knows that he needs a category in that second round. Here we go. Our last question in round one is a Patreon sponsored question. How about a round of applause for all the Patreon yeah. supporters out there? The movie trivia showdown patron. This patron that sponsored this question, good friend of ours, John Patterson. Thank you, John, for supporting the movie trivia showdown and our Patreon therein. He chose well, he the should. category of sports movies. All right. Sports movies. Question is: In White Men Can't Jump, Rosie Perez's character Gloria is studying to compete on what game show? I will remind the crowd once again, you may know the correct answer. Please don't even think it Five, until they are done writing. Four, three, two, one. Winston. The price is right. Incorrect. Oh. Dan. Winston and I are on the same page because I also wow. said the price is right. Stacy. I have no idea. Jeopardy? Yes. And John Roca. John Roca to keep your, four, your five point lead. I have even less of an idea. Jeopardy? That's a correct answer. 12. <laughs> Josh Next McCuga, host of Jeopardy. the future host of Jeopardy. But get out of there. Get out of there. There he is, throwing the Jeopardy coins everywhere. <laughs> well done. Well done. All yeah. right. So at the end of round number one, the Founding Fathers are up by five points here, 12-7, but anything goes. In round number two, it is the wheel round. What happens, Mark? In the wheel round, the wheel of justice, doom, 
perhaps fate will be spun once by each team. If you don't like the category you spin, you do get a mulligan unless you spin the dreaded opponent's choice. Each wedge on that there wheel contains six questions from said genre of movie trivia. Each question is worth two points. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is correct. If you get it right then, it's only worth one point. I will remind both teams and all four competitors, stealing is available in round number two. And don't worry, you are allowed to rely on your teammates' knowledge throughout the duration of round numero dos. Yeah, and Stacy used one of the repeats, so I know this has two left. The Founding Fathers has not used any. They are also in the lead, so Dan and John are you going to spin the wheel first, Christian? I would like to point out to everybody, we mentioned the Movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon. Yep. This is a sponsored wheel here today. <laughs> Very excited about this wheel. And we have two wheel slices that are sponsored, and it's all thanks to Nathan Ovendale. You guys can check out the Movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon. Maybe we'll say your name on a live show. Thank you, Nathan. The two slices that he decided to sponsor were Leonardo DiCaprio movies. <laughs> And Scott Mance's favorite, or excuse me, Ben Bateman's, ben Bateman's favorite, favorite, movie release dates. Yeah. Ellis. Movie All right. release dates. All right. I think he said so that wrong. So with that, Dan and John, do you guys want to spin first or second? Tell him, Dan. We're going to go second. Going to go second. All right. So you guys, I know this. Spin it. And Winston, just make sure. Spin it from the wheel, please. Spin it from the wheel, not the look, pegs. Look, I may have missed hella questions, but I'd be spinning this wheel, though. <laughs> spin the wheel, not by the peg. Please There's grip the wheel, not the pegs. Thank you very much. And the wheel's been through a lot this year. Oh, There's the spin. That's fun. That's that goes. Yes, wait. You got to do it again. Here's the spin. Look, the wheel is old. I'm trying to give the wheel an opportunity to live its life. <laughs> Winston's going to give it a spin. There you go. That was. There you go. You know, if every competitor could do that, Christian, yeah. this show would last a lot longer. What's it land on? I can't see it. They are going to keep it. All right, so they hit Pixar, and they're going to stick with Pixar, and we're going to get five questions, six questions in the realm of Pixar. All right, I will be asking the questions in the realm of Pixar, where everybody knows the best Pixar movie, Cars 3. Oh. <laughs> One go. person agrees. Yeah, it's a beast. Your first question of six in the slate. What is the name of Sid's dog that terrorizes Woody and Buzz in the original Toy Story? I'm talking it over. Five, four, three, two, one. Multiple choice. Is it A, Scud, B, Spud, C, Rover, D, Spike? Uh, we're going to go with Scud. It is, in fact, Scott right, for one, one point. point. One point. All right. Okay. All right, next question. Your next question. Who voiced the octopus named Hank in Finding Dory? Five, four, three. Multiple choice. Is it A, Ty Burrell, B, Eugene Levy, C, Ed O'Neill, or D, Bill Hader? I don't know. One point. They're maneuvering their way through multiple choice Fight early, Christian. Trying to, try to tie up the game. Your next question to get us to the halfway point in your slate. What is the name of the mega corporation in Wally? Uh, Five, four, three, two. By and large. Correct. That's two points. All right. Winston paying homage to our Lord and Savior, Tim Tebow. Next question. <laughs> All right. Your fourth question in the round. Who was the director of the Pixar film Ratatouille? They can take the lead if they get this First correct. Here. Five, four. Three. Multiple choice. Is it A, Brad Bird, B, Andrew Stanton, C, Pete Doctor, or D, John Lasseter? Brad Bird. One point. Fighting. They're fighting. Stacy's guessing her head off, doing a good job of it. Tied, and they still have two questions to go. Your penultimate question in this round. 
In the movie Inside Out, what kind of product had a jingle that kept being played annoyingly all of the emotions? How am I going to rewatch all the Pixar movies but Inside Out? Five, four, three. Multiple choice. Is it A, soda, B, gum, C, ice cream, or D, toy store? Five, four. Uh, gum? They got another one out of multiple choice. I knew it. That one point gives them the lead, 13 to 12. Last question here. Let's go. Your final question in round two. In the movie Brave, who provides the voice of Merida's mother, Queen Eleanor? Yeah. I can hear five. I can hear five flipping. Four. Do you know it? Three. Multiple choice. Is it A. Emily Blunt, B. Kate Winslet, C. Emma Thompson, or D. Carrie Mulligan? Five. Emma Thompson? They got another one out of multiple she, choice. She one of the most aggressive maneuvering yeah. of multiple choices I've ever seen. She might be better. She might be better than McCuga guessing at this point. She's so good at it. <laughs> All right, so now the founding fathers, now if they get something they like, they can get a strong lead, but if they hit something they're not good at, then I know this could have a great advantage. All right, and the former champion, John Roca, is going to go and spin that up. All right. There's a John spin. Roca. You see what he did there? He yeah. didn't spin it as hard as he could. He just tried to put a little extra gusto to top Winston's spin. Meryl Street, Meryl Street, Meryl Street, Meryl Street. We know what category the crowd wants. Oh, wow. Opponent's choice. It is opponent's, opponent's choice. Opponent's choice. That's huge. And a feeling. And Winston Marshall jumping Man, around the feeling. stage right now. And what are they going to take? The team is hyped, Christian, do? but now the pressure's on big. them to select a yeah. category that's good, really going to confound the Founding Fathers. I, I jinxed it, John. It's my fault. Founding Fathers, not what known for having do? a lot of weaknesses. What are they going to do? They seem time dumbfounded on, on what, what to choose. Five, four. You're going to have to pick three or let them pick two. Is that what you're picking? Yeah, that's fine. Movie, movie, movie release, release dates, dates it is. All right. Movie release dates. Nathan Ovendale. Well done, sir. All right, here we go. Movie release dates. These are dates movies were released in. All right. Question one, gentlemen. What year saw the release of the Natalie Portman film V for Vendetta? Bro, if you don't get this with that mask. <laughs> I love when those coincidences happen. Yeah. Five. We think we know what we're going to take multiple choice, though. Is it A, 2002, B, 2004, C, 2005, D, 2006? Uh, 2005. That's correct for one point. All right. There you go. Next question. What year did the comedy Three Men and a Baby come out? <laughs> You know, there's a dead child in that movie. Uh, five, four, three. That's just morbid. It's in the Two, movie. I didn't do it. Sure? One. Okay. Multiple choice. Multiple choice. Is it A, 1983, B, 1985, C, 1987, D, 1988? 1987. One point. That's correct. Multiple choice seems to be the way to go for both teams here on the movie trivia showdown stage. All right, next question here. We saw Carl Fredrickson attach a attack a bunch of balloons to his house and fly away and up in what year? It's the first Roka breathing directly into the mic we've had tonight. <laughs> 2009. That's correct for two points. All right. Yeah. The lead is theirs alone again. All right. Here we go. Next question here. The Vince Vaughn comedy Old School was released in what year? Five, four, three, two. Multiple choice. Is it 
A, 2001, B, 2003, C, 2004, D, 2006. Mm -hmm. 2003? One point. <laughs> All right. Multiple choice in, chiseling yep. their way yep. around the round. Next question here. This is question number five. What year saw the release of these two Julia Roberts films? The rom-com, My Best Friend's Wedding, and the thriller Conspiracy Theory. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Multiple, multiple choice. Is it A, 1995, B, 1997, C, 1998, D, 2000? 1997. That's correct. One point. Okay. We have not had a multiple Keep choice miss yet. Good. All right. Wow. Last question. Last question. Christopher Nolan's Inception entered our dreams and theaters in the summer of what year? 2010. Correct for two points. <laughs> so the founding fathers have a nice run there, have two for two points, and they get themselves 2014. What a battle there. Yeah, a real impressive close to a nice round. Both teams really showing their strength. And Christian, we talked about chemistry at the top of the program. Both teams displaying a nice amount of knowledge, but also working together to come up with the multiple choice guesses. That's correct. So we have, I believe, the, I know this has one, no, excuse me, two JTE rules left. And the fathers have all three left. And we get into round number three, Mark. How's it work? This is the round that will determine the winner unless we go to overtime in round number three. Each team is going to give us a series of three numbers. Those numbers may range from one to 20. Take your 21 and overs and get the hell out of here. Each number you give us corresponds to a different movie trivia category up here at the answer desk. Your first question is worth two. The next one is worth three points. The last one is worth five points. And I will remind each team that once you hear the category, for your two-point question, the team must select which member of that squad is going to be answering it. You only answer that alone, not with your teammate. Same thing for the three-pointer. The opposite teammate will have to answer that one alone. You are allowed to collaborate with your teammate just for the five-point question. Because the founding fathers are in the lead by six points, going into round number three, we'll hear your numbers first. What would you like? Eight, six, and 20. 20. Eight, six, and 20. All Thank right. you for not picking any of our numbers. Good. Good so time. I know Five, this. Mm -hmm. uh, Three. 13. 19. Three, 13, and 19. All evens, all odds, interesting. All right, so well, what we're going to have to do is I know this. We'll have to hit all three in order to, excuse me, they are going to have a chance to try to avoid the TKO here, and they start off with their two-pointer. They chose category number three again they do have two jte rules left category number three here we go category number three comes from the world but who's yeah who's gonna take it the blessed world of tom cruise mm. guy runs fast which one he wants to take it okay all right winston's gonna take it yeah. winston yeah. signs yeah. up yeah. yeah i'll do it no pressure all right winston your question. In what profession is Tom Cruise's character Barry Seal when he's hired by the CIA in the movie American Made? Oh my God, I just rewatched this. Five, four, three. JT. The second one. In what profession is Tom Cruise's character Barry Seal when he is hired by the CIA in American Made? Five, four, three, two, JTE. Last one. In what profession is Tom Cruise's character Barry Seal when he is hired by the CIA in American Made? Five, four, three. Car salesman. He is. <laughs> Your mom. He is an airline pilot. He is a pilot, so he missed that one. He missed that one, Airline and now, pilot. so Stacy's got to hit this three. Stacy has to hit this three, or they will lose via TKO. Stacy needs to hit the three. Before I lose this, I believe this, you selected uh, number nine. Uh, they chose, no, 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 they chose 13. They chose shout 13. out to my girlfriend, Kristen. 13. I don't know where you at, girl, but I 13 is what they chose. Here we go. All right, Stacy. all comes down to this 
But if you get the question right, don't worry. We have more pressure for you to handle. <laughs> there you go. You selected number 13, and that corresponds to another big movie star with great abs, Brad Pitt. Where's Ken? And your question. Another occupation question. What was Tyler Durden's occupation in Fight Club? He made soap for like, perfect, like cosmetic counters. And you stuff. can stop there with soap. <laughs> you got Three it. points. All right, so we find ourselves in this position here. I know this, We're this game. has to hit their five pointer. If they hit it, it bounces back to the founding fathers. If they miss it, it is a TKO. Here we go, Mark. All right. Your question is, for five points to continue the match, in the world of fantasy science fiction, name the two actors that appear in all six films in the Middle Earth saga. You'll have 20 seconds to answer. That's Lord of the Rings and uh, the other three. Five, four. Uh, Ian McKellen and Orlando Bloom. And your winners! By way of technical knockout, the outlaw John Roca, Dangerous Dan Merle, the founding fathers. It was Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett and Ian McKellen. Kate, Kate Blanchett, Blanchett and Ian McKellen. Hugo Weaving was not in the desolation of yeah, Smaug. Yeah, the horsemen pull off the victory. Stacey Howard played amazing. Wins the struggle a bit, but man, there you go. So, the, what a match! The horsemen do it. Here. They are the first to advance. They are the first to advance. You've got Dan Merle, John Rogner. They have done it. Dan Merle gets his first victory back in a bit. So now you've got it. Now the question is here: as you realize this, you know that now they're going to play the winners of the match between newcomer Rachel Silverstrini and Devin Stewart or Mike Kalinowski and the newcomer Chance Ellison. Run that up. Yeah. Hey, Kalinowski, take care of business. Chance, hey, Rook, we coming for you, baby. I don't know where you're at in the audience, but we coming for you. Handle your business, and we'll see you in the second round. Oh, there round. you go. All right, so that is a, uh, I mean, that was a match. You look, yeah. the thing is, these guys played very strong in that first round, and Winston struggled, and Stacy Stacy fought well. Yeah, but you know, they, they were competitive at least leaving round one. Round number two, they really showed their ability. I don't want this to be the last time we see them team no. up. We don't know what's gonna happen after I Anarchy, but we're, they really complement each other's knowledge well. We'll see, I will see, but we're gonna hear, because now we're gonna talk to all the competitors here because we're going to figure out that there's going to be a lot to be said. I'm very interested to see what the Founding Fathers are going to talk about. But we're going to find out a lot about both teams as we now go to Jen Sturger. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmoda fans? Oh, I'll never get over that. Guys, I, I know that match didn't go the way you obviously wanted it to, but I feel like for a first match together, you guys put on a pretty good show. Yeah, I think so. I mean, first of all, I spent 50 bucks on each of those dinosaurs costumes, so we better put on a big fucking show for you guys. Um, I thought we did great as a team for the first time, and we both put in our best effort. We had a, bun of, a bunch of fun, you know? Yeah. And Winston, you had a, a little bit of a hard time in round one. I did. It was, uh, it was not great. I was <laughs> very happy that we got Pixar so I could make up for it, because I looked like a jackass for the first 15 minutes of this match. You know what I'm saying? But it's okay, I did my, my best, you know, black Dr. Ian Grant, so I'm feeling good, you know? I'm an Alan Grant, oh God. See, you see, this is, this is what I'm talking about. I had a terrible night tonight, I'm so sorry, y'all. God damn, it's the lights, it's, it's a lot, it yeah. The lights. Is it the lights or is it the oil on Koi's chest? That was inspiration. That was, no, that was, a, get, 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 get a close up of it. Please don't. They're children watching. Oh Jesus. Koi, you have to be feeling pretty good that they had such a good match. Obviously, it knocked you guys out of the tournament, but that was a pretty good showing. I was super proud of them. I, you know, I wanted to write the answers on my chest and have it reflect back. It didn't work out. A little bit cheating. I didn't want to do it. But I, uh, they did great, and they got a Fight Club question right. I'm proud of them. Lord of the Rings haunts me, so it felt fitting. I felt bad on the sides. Like, have I done this to them? What is this? But I was proud of them. Look, look Stacy had that question. She asked me. She, she knew the answer. She said Ian McKellen and Clay Lynch, and I was like, and she said or Orlando Bloom. I was like, oh, Orlando Bloom, you know, Lego lost and shit. So like, I thought she had it. So I, it's my fault. I'll take that L for us, Stacy. I apologize. 
want to say sorry to Rachel. She's probably so pissed I got that question wrong. Um, but you know what? I mean, it is what it is. You just have to have fun with it. And if you're nervous in the moment, just go with your gut. Sometimes it gets you there. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't, whatever. Stacy, once again, you put on a hell of a performance today. And we can't wait to see what you do the rest of the year. All right. Sorry, guys. You're out of the tournament. That, that's okay. I'm about to go watch all those Medea movies because the Black Schmodown is coming. There you go. So you've got, wait, I know this. Look, they put up a fight. They have absolutely put up a fight. And I think the way that they played multiple choice was good. Stacey Howard, again, like what I said in the beginning of this, Stacey Howard is a very, very underrated competitor. Yep, yeah, and I, I, we still have a burning question with that team. Who in the hell was in those dinosaur costumes? I'm as confused as everybody else. I don't know. I'm still betting on JT. All right, <laughs> so I'm looking forward to seeing... What these two, I mean, it, it's, again, if you're a Schmodown fan, to watch these two guys compete together, yeah. seeing what they do together, and now watching them stand side by side, who'd have thought? And now we're going to talk to Jen Sturger, who is with the winners of today's match, the Founding Fathers, Dan Merle and John Roca. Here we go. So this is what it feels like to be sandwiched in between two legends, huh? Guys, that was a pretty impressive first match you guys just put on out there. You got to be feeling pretty good heading into this tournament. Absolutely. Listen, uh, Winston and Stacey, we've been saying this from the beginning. They, 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 this is the toughest first round matchup yet, and you know they really brought it. We knew we had to bring it. Stacey really showed out. You know, Winston was a bit unfortunate some of the answers, but they, you know they spun opponent's choice, or I spun opponent's choice. So anything could have happened. We had to bring our A game. Were you guys nervous when you hit opponent's choice? I mean, I'm sure you were sweating bullets. Not to bring up a bad subject. Yeah, it's worked out great every time I got hit with opponent's choice in the past. Uh, yeah, but. It, it, we, we, we were lucky. It's, I don't know the stats on it. I'm sure somebody knows like, the number of times people get hit with opponent's choice and actually win. So that was a bit of luck on our part, I think. Yeah, I, I want to say one thing. If, if I hadn't made Dan go to multiple choice on two or three of those when he was questioning himself, he would have gotten, we would have gotten two points in each one of those ones. Dan carried us through that whole second round. I got to give it up to him. As Bibiani noted. Do you feel like this could be the end of the horseman curse? There was no horseman curse. I didn't build, we didn't build our reputation on a couple of losses. We built our reputation on coming back, fighting, winning, and winning titles. Some kid who came off the street and studied a book and got lucky twice on ring rust does not take us down. When he wins a belt, then I'll hear what he has to say. So obviously now, you know, with the tournament in play, you're going to be playing either Ellison Kalinowski or Silver Trini Stewart. Any preference? Oh, I don't want to speculate on that. I mean, I think you heard me up on that stage. Dan, you take this one. And Silk Street. Uh, yeah, I, I've kind of moved away from uh, uh, hoping to play people because I've learned it doesn't always work out the way you think. So. <laughs> Uh, what I know is uh, John and I are, uh, we, we prepared for this match and we're going to keep preparing and we plan to go out, walk out, play every game and when the game's over, we're going to have the most points on the board and that's all we care about. We don't care who we play. I think that wraps it up. Back to you guys. All right. I mean, Christian, you see there, this is one of the many reasons I love Jen Sturger is that she's not afraid to ask the tough question. She asked about the horseman curse. They rebuffed it outright. Yeah, I mean, look, the, I liked that answer. There never was. Because if you look at it, John Roca, I think, debunked that when he beat Ben Bateman. And then you look at this match, they have that. There's only, they're two and two since they formed. And that's, uh, that's pretty good. Roca, Merle taking the victory. And there's our tournament. So if you submitted your brackets and you had Dan and Roca, you're looking good. There's the tournament. It is up there. The tournament anarchy has begun. What an absolute beginning this was. And now, just wait for Friday, because this Friday we're getting the Inner Geekdom Championship, and it's coming up in just a second here for the live event. We're going to be getting Jason Inman, the champion, defending against Mara Kanapik. It's going to be an exciting one, partner. We're off to a yeah. hot start. I would like to thank everybody here for this episode of the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Thank you, guys. We mentioned the patrons. Thank you to Jen Sturger. Thank you to everybody here. Thank you to our great team. Thank you to the fans for coming tonight. And again, make sure you check out the Patreon. And then guess what? In September, if you are on Patreon, you get to see us finally do battle. That's right. Five-round battle between the two of us. It goes down this month. 
So I would like to thank you. I would like to thank you guys. And join us again this Friday for the Inner Geekdom Championship between Mara Kanopic and Jason Inman. Thank you guys very much, and we'll see you on Friday. How's it going, guys? If you didn't know about the Patreon, you guys have a chance to support the Schmodown. Now, myself, Mark Ellis, we've taken over the production. Basically, you guys have 16 tiers to choose from. We're trying to give back to the fans. Go and check it out right there. If you want to support the Schmodown by becoming a patron today, go ahead and do it. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've given us. And, yeah, there's some really crazy tiers in there. I'd love to get your opinions on it. Now, go enjoy the match. Go do it. It's a good match, for God's sakes.